We've been going through Romans, and we've gotten to Romans 9, 10, and 11, uh, where Paul tells those uh, in Rome what, why we can't be saved by Israel's gospel anymore. What happened to Israel? Why aren't they God's way to, for us to come to him anymore? And uh, we've gotten up to the olive tree. We've been studying that. Next uh, Thursday, I hope to finish that series, but we're near the end of it here tonight. Let's look in Romans 11:22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness. If thou if there's the condition, if thou continue in His goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. Thou also shall be cut off. It says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity. And that's talking about the, God's treatment of Israel, the way Israel related to God and the way God related to Israel. But toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. If is the condition, and those in Israel... And even those grafted into Israel uh, by circumcision as proselytes or uh, as uh, was pointed out the other day, uh, some Greeks are included in that, not necessarily all. Uh, there, were, there was a condition for them, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shalt be cut off. So that's obviously not us that are already saved. Uh, these people weren't saved. They were trusting that they could endure to the end to be saved, remember? So Israel had different doctrine. Uh, thou also shall be cut off from what? What is it talking about in that verse that they'll be cut off from? Cut off from what they were in. They were in the green olive tree, Israel. They would be cut off from Israel they would be cut off from Israel's future salvation into the land on earth. They were not being saved into the body of Christ. Instead, they were enduring to the end in order to, in the end, be saved as part of Israel into the land. So um, that's, that's Israel's future, as told many times throughout the prophets, the Old Testament, as told by uh, Peter, James, John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, in Acts 1 through 7, that's the word. Uh, the land is what God promised to Israel in places like Genesis 13, 15, uh, Genesis 12, 7, Deuteronomy 30, verse 16. Uh, well, let's look at some of those verses. <coughs> Genesis 13, 15. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. That's pretty blunt, pretty uh, specific. In uh, Deuteronomy 30, 16, in that, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments. Well, that's the way he was dispensing his grace and his salvation at that time. Uh, that thou mayest live and multiply and that the Lord and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. They didn't get there yet. Uh, not permanently. They, they failed at... Uh, Jericho, uh, they failed at Ai. They conquered Jericho and failed at Ai and uh, a series of failures then. Uh, but this verifies that Israel was going to be saved in the land if they endured to the end. In the land uh, is part of, you know, it's the part we're looking for, when, what we're talking about here, uh, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God. That's God talking through Moses to Israel that they had to love the Lord, to walk in his ways. That's an action, isn't it? That's a work. 
to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, they were under works, not grace. We are under grace, not law. Different. Uh, things that are different are not the same. There's a different gospel that saves us. Uh, but that's uh, doing works. Uh, it says to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. So their inheritance was in the land, on earth, not in heaven. Heaven was never promised in the Old Testament. The revelation of Jesus Christ through Paul was the first time it was told us that we in the body of Christ would have a home eternal in the heavens. 2 Corinthians 5.1 Romans 11.23 uh, And they also, if they, meaning Israel, if they abide not still in unbelief, they shall be grafted in. Grafted in again. Uh, before Israel was cast away and was low am I, those Israelites that were in unbelief about Jesus being the Messiah were, the, and were in unbelief about Jesus having risen from the dead, if they abide not still in unbelief, they shall be grafted in into what? They were, uh, well, they shall be grafted into the singular olive tree. It's, uh, it's not trees. <laughs> it's one olive tree, and it's mentioned in, in Romans eleven seventeen, which uh, Jeremiah 11, verses 16 to 17, show us specifically is the singular nation of Israel. Not nations, a nation, Israel. So they would be grafted back again, uh, back into Israel again. For God is able to graft them in again. And uh, the natural branches of the olive tree could not be grafted back into the body of Christ again because they started in Israel. They had never been in the body of Christ before so they could not be grafted into the body of Christ again. The word again is in there. They were never in the body of Christ before. This again confirms that the branches were grafted into Israel, not into the body of Christ. Paul wrote to all that be in Rome in, in the time period of Acts 20. You get to Acts 20. And in verse 3, he had a rest period there, and he wrote to those, to all that be in Rome, the Roman epistle. And we know that, uh, we know it, uh, how do you put it? <laughs> By the time of Acts 28, uh, we know that Paul recited Isaiah 6, that, that curse in Isaiah 6, recited it to Israel, inspired of God. And they were cut off at that point. They had fallen in Acts 7, blaspheming and, and speaking against the Holy Ghost, but they were cut off in, uh, in Acts 28. They were low am I, as prophesied by Hosea in Hosea 1, verse 9. So after Israel was low am I, there could be no more grafting of anyone into Israel because Israel was no, Israel was no longer God's people. Uh, let's go to the last verse in the section, verse 24. Romans eleven twenty-four. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, so he's talking about those uh, proselytes and Greeks, if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted into, graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Of course, the condition was if they change and believe now that Jesus was the Christ and that he resurrected. 
<coughs> but that no, not only is talking about Israelites, but also the nation, the nation of Israel. Back in uh, Romans 11, verses 12 and 15, Paul had already revealed that there will eventually be a fullness of Israel. Verse 12. Romans 11:12, and that there will eventually be a receiving of them that will be life from the dead. Romans 11:15. So what do we know about God? Is he worth trusting? God is totally trustworthy. When he tells us some, something, uh, it's a promise. We can, we can uh, count on it. He had revealed part of the mystery for us, the body of Christ, to know that at some point in the future, Israel will be back in God's favor after the catching up of the body of Christ that's here, that the people are being saved into today. God will keep all his promises to Israel. God does not make promises and then say, well, I'm going to fulfill it to somebody else. No. If a if I promised to take you for an ice cream cone and then I took you and your friend and I got him an ice cream cone but not you, I would have made a promise to you and claimed to have fulfilled it to somebody else. I would not be worthy of your trust. How dare anyone claim that God himself does that deceitful thing to his firstborn son, Israel, the recipient of the promise was Israel, and the recipient was part of what was promised. The recipient will still be Israel, not the body of Christ, not Gentiles or somebody else. Israel will be the one to be blessed by Christ later on. Israel will be the ones in the kingdom, of kingdom that out of heaven on earth, that will be ruled by Jesus Christ himself on the throne and the 12 apostles on 12 thrones, as the Bible says. Uh, verses for that, let's, let's look at some of those verses. Acts 2, 29 and down from there on. Uh, we'll start with Acts 2, 29. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us to this day. Verse 30, Therefore being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. That's why in Romans 1, uh, 1 through 4, I think it's verse 3, it, it, it mentions that the gospel of God includes believing that Jesus was of the of the uh, line of David, descended from David, because that's where the Christ would come from. Verse thirty one. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. Uh, Acts two thirty two. This. Jesus hath God raised up whereof we are we all are witnesses. So th that's part of it a uh, couple more aspects to check in scripture Matthew 25:31 When the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy the holy are sanctified that that's uh, saints the saints in uh, what is it first Thessalonians 3.13, I think it is. Uh, all, all his holy saints, these are the holy angels. Uh, same people, same event. It's just that those saints are not human saints. They're angels as speci specified here. And all the holy angels with him. Then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And Matthew 19:28 says that Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Verily, I say unto you, that you which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall come, shall, excuse me, when the, that ye which have 
followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the, in the throne of his glory, you also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Let me just see what popped up here. Okay, I'll, I'm going to have to wait to read that. Um, 12 tribes of Israel. So that was promised to the 12 apostles. So we know they are going to be in that kingdom. They're not going to fail to endure to the end for those 12 people, including Matthias. He is the 12th. Uh, Christ and the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles, will be ruling from Jerusalem in the land on earth. They will rule over the world for a thousand years, as it says six times in the book of Revelation, chapter 20. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 6 says, Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That's Israel's first re resurrection. We'll already be in heaven by then, according to Second Thessalonians 1, verses 6 and 7. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection of such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him w with him a thousand years. These priests, the only ones in the Bible promised that they will be priests, is Israel in Exodus 20, verse 5 and 6. So, again, Israel uh, is, will reign on the earth a thousand years. It's not a mythical amount of time, a long time. It would say a long time. It's a thousand years. God is very specific. Down to the day, at least a couple times in the scriptures, it takes note that God fulfilled his promise on the day, on the very day that it was to be fulfilled. So the graft in Wild, uh, wild olive branches were those of the Roman Gentiles that rested in the law. That Paul was writing to them. He was writing to them here. And this whole section, remember, it's about prophecy. It's about the Old Testament. How, how, how there can be a new pattern, a new way to come to God with you know what happened to the old way well they fell they were cast away um, you know this whole section is about that and the olive tree is about that the olive tree has nothing to do with the body of Christ it's all about Israel and the varying people that were accessing God through Israel's covenants uh, look briefly at the beginning of the Roman epistle when uh, when Paul wrote to them, the Bible says in the seventh verse of the epistle, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The impact of the book of Romans is is not. <laughs> it's Romans one through eight. And 12 to the end, uh, 11, uh, 9, 10, and 11 is not about us. It's about Israel. It's to us. It's to those in Rome, to all that be in Rome. Uh, it's, it's not specifying to Israel. It's about Israel, though, so that we know that, that uh, God didn't make a mistake and, you know, have... I don't know, <laughs> two ways uh, all through these centuries. No, God knew what he was doing. He waited until Israel fell before he saved Paul as the first one in the body of Christ by the gospel of Christ, the first one to believe the gospel of Christ to be saved. In Acts 9, two, two chapters, probably just a few hours after the stoning in Acts 7. Paul was writing to all that be in Rome. He doesn't say to Israel in Rome or uh, the Gentiles in Rome. He doesn't say to the body of Christ in Rome. He's writing to all that be in Rome. 
and you can pick out spots where he addresses Israel. You can pick out spots where he addresses Gentiles that rest in the law. Uh, they would be those Greek, the Greeks and, uh, and the proselytes that we've been talking about. They were grafted into the olive tree. They, they had all, they were trying to come to God on the basis of the covenants and the commandments, the gospel of the circumcision, not the gospel of the uncircumcision. Paul was explaining Israel's status during that time of Israel's changing status. So here he says to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, he's calling them to be saints. Jesus Christ is calling them to become saints through Paul's gospel. Call to be saints, grace to you and peace. Therefore we're justified uh, therefore, we have peace with God, justified by faith. Uh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Just saying that so we notice the connection with the gospel. It's, it's only through the gospel of Christ, the gospel of the grace of God today, that we have peace with God and have inner peace. We saw that uh, there's... Um, at the end of the section in Romans 11:24, that God is again telling Israel, Israel has, or telling uh, all of us that Israel has a bright future, a bright future. Um, for if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert graft in, graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Well, we'll pick it up with the last part next time, next Thursday probably. That's what we'll plan toward. And uh, that completes the study tonight. Any comments or questions? Let me see what, uh, if I can find that note that was left me while I was talking. Uh, let's see what, no, oh, he's got a whole lot written here. It's what Jesus did, not what Paul did. I preach Jesus Christ and not myself or Paul. Well, you're mixed up then, Mike. Uh, Brother Mike, he called himself. Um, and we, you can't preach Jesus, uh, truthfully today without preaching Paul what what the message that Jesus Christ gave for us gave it to Paul for us uh, we're not robbing Paul or <laughs> trying to to take away from Jesus Jesus gave Israel what they needed they needed to see the righteousness of God and and yet they didn't come to him on the whole, the the majority and the leadership. So, any questions?